So in this video I'm going to explain what Land Rover's terrain response really is and also the equivalent systems from different manufacturers which I call adaptive terrain systems or ATSs and how to drive with them. Now to understand an ATS or an adaptive terrain system, you've got to understand that every 4x4 terrain is different and needs different characteristics from the car. That's why we've had low range, locking differentials, etc, etc. So this is nothing new. ATS is just an electronic version of configuring the car for those terrains. Now you can think of every single terrain as three types or a combination of those three types. The first is, is it soft? Then is it slippery? And then is it rough? So as an example, rock is very, very rough. You wouldn't call it at all soft, and you certainly really wouldn't call it slippery in most cases. Sand, that is often very soft. Um, it's not really that slippery. It's, it's soft and loose, but not really slippery. And it's generally not that rough. Ice, well, that's super, super slippery, the slipperiest terrain you're ever likely to find. It's unlikely to be rough, and it's unlikely to be soft either. And then mud, probably maybe a combination of all of them. It could be a little bit rough, but not as rough as rock. It's certainly going to be a bit soft, depending on the type of mud, and it's certainly going to be a bit slippery. So that's how you need to start thinking of terrains. And there's only four terrains, but you could go on it and put pretty much every terrain onto this chart. Now, if we go into this a bit more detail, let's take a look at mud. So we could say shallow mud, it's not really super soft if it's on a hard surface, it's certainly pretty slippery, and you know there might be some, some ruts in it, so maybe it is a bit rough. Deep mud, really deep, chop suey, peaty type mud, well, that's unlikely to be rough because it is just so soft, so we increase the softness of it. It is very slippery because it's earth water, and that is a very slippery combination, so high on slippery, high on soft, but not really rough. So that, that's two types of mud, so you can't really categorise one terrain as always being the same thing. Now if we look at sand, hard beach sand, well that's neither soft, it's not slippery and it's not rough. You can drive a two-wheel drive vehicle on it. I've towed my uh, my caravan in two-wheel drive on beaches, for example. Now, if we go for soft beach sand, well, that's the opposite. That is super, super soft. Again, it's not slippery, and it's certainly not rough either, because all four wheels are uh, um, firmly on, on the ground. But then if we look at desert dunes, when you're going through something like the Simpson Desert and people have chewed up those uh, sand ascents, well, that is actually starting to be quite rough now, because there's ruts. It's still a bit soft, but not as soft as super soft softer fine powder on beaches or on dunes and slippery again really not that slippery so you can see sand itself has different types of subterrains as well so an adaptive terrain system reconfigures the vehicle according to the terrain now pretty much everyone these days has an ats so we've got jeep select terrain nissan has got all mode uh, Toyota have got MTS, Multiple Terrain Select, Ford just call it Drive Modes, as do Mitsubishi and the latest Triton, and Land Rover is the OG, as the cool kids like to say, with Terrain Response. So what does a ter um, an ATS actually do? Well, we can talk about the vehicle setup, and it changes things on, on the vehicle to adapt to the terrain. So the first thing is BTC, Brake Traction Control. I've got videos explaining that. ESC, Electronic Stability Control. It will change the calibration of that. It will change how and when the vehicle gear shifts with an automatic. It will change how it responds to the throttle. Locking diffs, should they be in or out if they're um, computer controlled? Suspension might be controlled as well, firm, soft, high, or low. It all of those things. And then that creates better clearance, better power, and better traction according to the conditions, leading to a vehicle which is optimized for soft, rough, or slippery terrain, or something in between uh, two of those extremes. So an example here from Mitsubishi, seven different drive modes, anything from normal driving all the way through to rock, we'll get onto what they mean in a moment. And here's um, one from Land Rover. I'm gonna go through this in a bit more detail because it is the most comprehensive one out there. So what changes? Well, the throttle response, um, so that's what happens when you accelerate, the, uh, push the throttle down or come off it. In grass, gravel, snow, it's less responsive because that's a slippery mode. Sand, it's a tapered response, so it starts off slow, but then it gets quicker. Same for rock cord, it's just generally less responsive and mud and sand similar to, to sorry, mud and rut similar to sand. Gear shifts, the second gear start, um, early shift upwards, 
Sand, it tends to hold gears because you want the power delivery. Rock crawl, again, it holds gears so that you're not constantly changing gears over a rough terrain. And mud ruts tends to hold gears a bit. Brake traction control, um, that will tend to be a fairly slow response because you want a bit of slip. Here it's a tapered response that so allows some wheel spin, but then as the speed difference between the wheels increases, it starts to activate more. Very fast response for rock crawl, so absolute minimum wheel spin allowed in rock crawl mode and similar for mud ruts. Locking diffs, this is the center locking diff or clutch. It will increase the preload here, increase the preload for sand. It gives a quick response as well because things happen at high speed in the sand. And rock crawl, maximum preload, quick response. You really want to get everything locked up for that. And it goes on ESC, reduced, 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 reduced. ESC typically need to reduce even further or turn it off again in Land Rovers. Now there's a number of presets as well. So this is how the vehicle is, is sort of preset up for the terrain. Hill descent control on for um, grass, gravel, snow, off for sand, because you just let the, the resistance of the sand do the work for you, on and on for, for those, air suspension, um, whether it's gonna be up or down, and range, whether you can select that mode in a given range or not. So for example, with rock crawl, you, you can only select it in low range. So I'll put a more detailed version of this on a blog post accompanying this video. Now the difference is with types of ATS mode are best demonstrated with brake traction control, Subaru XV or Crosstrek, exactly the same position, one with X mode enabled, one not, X mode is Subaru's ATS system, you can see that the brake traction control calibration much more effective in X mode. Now we've got three Subaru Foresters, X mode enabled, snow dirt mode and deep snow mud mode. The throttle inputs are the same in all three cases. It's just the stability control and brake traction control vary. And you can see that there's three quite different results from each of the three different types of mode. And finally, we've got Land Rover's terrain response, rock crawl, very fast acting brake traction control, barely allowing any wheel spin, grass, gravel, snow, far more relaxed, allowing a lot more wheel spin. But it's a closed loop system so that car figures it out and gets there. So how do you use an ATS? Well, don't think of sand, rock and snow. Think of soft, rough and slippery. That's the way to do it. And there's a three step process. One, look at that terrain and say to yourself, is it soft, is it rough or is it slippery? And that means, well, sand, for example, um, typically that would be quite soft, but not always. Icy roads, that would be typically slippery. Rock, typically predominantly rough. Rutted sand dunes, somewhere between um, rock, rough and soft. So we're gonna put that one over there. Earth and ruts, again, they're gonna be rough, but maybe a little bit soft as well. Um, deep, loose gravel, well, that's probably gonna be more soft. You'd sink into it as opposed to slippery. Deep snow, the opposite of icy roads, that's gonna be really soft. It might be slippery as well, but probably more soft than anything else. And hard, wet grass, well, that's gonna be very slippery. Um, shallow mud, probably more slippery than soft. Um, wet, dusty rock, well, Again, that's certainly going to be rough, but it's going to be slippery as well. Now, step two is you look at which ATS mode corresponds to soft, rough or slippery. So I've got the examples from Land Rover and Mitsubishi here. I'll put them up in more detail on my blog post. So those are off-road modes for Land Rover. Those are the ones for Mitsubishi. And out of that, we can go, OK, in the case of Land Rover, the soft mode is sand. And in the case of the Mitsubishi, it's mud and ruts, which appear to be identical from that um, point. For the rough mode for Land Rover it's rock crawl, for Mitsubishi it's just called rock and for the slippery surfaces you use snow or grass gravel snow respectively. Now a bit more detail on this, here's all of the Land Rover modes, there's quite a few these days. These are the off-road modes that you tend to focus on the most and there's again slippery, soft and rough. And the auto mode in Land Rover will select from all of these and try and figure out the best terrain. And it does a pretty good job and that is the mode I'd be driving around in normally. There are also a few extra things the car does with terrain response. So it adds extra headlight, headlamp washing for mud and ruts, extra fan operation for cooling for sand mode and rough 
or rock, rock mode, it's got a brake pre-charge, so when the wheel comes off the rock, it actually applies to brake preemptively to stop it falling off the rock, and a bit of extra headlamp washing there, and in wading mode, then it will actually wipe the brakes after you have exited the water, and if you don't have a car that does that, just do a little bit of left foot braking when you exit the water. Now, we are gonna talk about configurable terrain response in another video, which takes some of these under some form of user control, but not in this one. And for the Mitsubishi, here we've got, again, there's your slippy mode, your soft mode, and your rough mode. Okay, so here's an example, and you select a mode, third step, um, according to soft, rough, and slippery. So we've got our soft, rough, slippery, snow, and ice. Now we've got two different types of snow and ice, shallow, icy snow, and deep snow. Well, they're actually quite different, so we might use grass, gravel, snow um, for the first one, and then for the deep snow, sand would probably be a more appropriate mode. If you use Land Rover's grass, gravel, snow in re really deep snow conditions, you're not gonna get too far, maybe it's mud and ruts. Um, in the case of sand, three, at least three different types of sand driving, so deep, soft sand where you're going up and down dunes, definitely want your sand modes for that, typically what they're designed for. Rutted sand dunes where the sand's not as powdery, but you might get scallops and dig outs and ruts and so forth. Mud ruts probably more appropriate. And going very, very slowly, extracting your vehicle onto max tracks on a, on a beach or something like that, you might well want rock mode, really get everything very tight and locked up because you're just moving incredibly slowly, trying to minimize wheel spin. Uh, mud. Shallow mud and deep mud. With shallow mud, you might go for something like grass, gravel, snow because it's more akin to a slippery surface like uh, ice or or very wet uh, grass, for example. In deep mud, you definitely wouldn't want that. You might go for your mud ruts, possibly even for a rock mud because you need power to push through and you need your traction control, um, brake traction control, tighten up as much as you can. So those are the three steps. What is the terrain? Is it soft, rough, or slippery? Which modes do I have which correspond to soft, rough, or slippery? Select that mode. So crossing the Simpson Desert, you're unlikely to need sand mode because it's pretty easy going, and you'll just have the engine revving higher than normal, wasting valuable fuel. Over here, though, it's really soft sand cross axle. That's where you want your rock mode to help get you out of that and tighten up the traction control. And this beach is so hard packed, well, you barely need four wheel drive at all, so sand mode's pointless. And this beach is pretty easy to drive on. It's, it's softer than the one you just saw, but it probably still doesn't warrant sand mode and all the extra revs that entails, so just keep it in normal. Now this is shallow, slippery mud. You don't need a huge amount of power, but you do need the vehicle to turn. And this is deep, thick mud. You do need power to get through that, and you're not too fussed about turning the vehicle. Now this is the sort of rock rock mode is typically designed for very slow, rough going. That's why you have to have your vehicle in low range. But rock can also be slippery if it's wet or if it's dusty as well. And it can also be quite smooth. We don't see that much in Australia, but we see quite a bit of that in the USA. But for all of these three examples, I'd use the same rock mode or rough mode. Right, now, are these ATSs actually effective and necessary? Do you actually need them? Well, I don't think they're necessary. And the Ineos Grenadier doesn't have them. I've just finished interviewing the tech chief and he said, well, we just want to keep the vehicle simple. Didn't really see it was necessary. And I tend to agree. Uh, I think that now there's actually reduced marketing of these because there used to be, oh, let, let's really push this, all these amazing drive modes. I think people have got a bit tired of drive modes in four-wheel drives and in sports cars. So they're just called drive modes now as opposed to people coming up with wonderful names for them. Now, they're also a closed loop system. And this means that let's say that you've got the car in grass, gravel, snow um, going up a uh, rotted, rutted slope and the traction control is slow to react. Well, the vehicle goes, hang on, I need to just put in more and more traction control effort, break those wheels more, and it will keep doing that till it gets the result. So because it's a closed loop system, typically the car will still get there even if it's the wrong mode. It's how easy that it does it more than anything else. And if you're gonna have an ATS, you've gotta really design it very well to be effective. And that, to be fair, is what Land Rover have done. Other manufacturers, not so much. I feel that they've just made a few token changes here and there and slapped some form of marketing moniker on it, so theirs don't really make that much of a difference. So, summary then. Think soft, rough, and slippery, not sand, mud, and snow. 
Most of the time an auto mode or normal mode is absolutely fine off-road. You only need to switch in and maybe mud ruts as a default. That used to be my default in a Discovery 3. You only really need to switch out, out of those modes if you're going to get into tougher terrain, you know, really deep sand and, and so forth. That's when you'd want to go, okay, let's look at different modes. Now, you should always use something like rock mode for hills because you want to lock up that centered defensive or clutch as much as you possibly can. That is a really important safety issue so I would always be using rock for, for difficult gnarly hills and experiment in different controlled conditions take your vehicle and drive it around the same obstacle in different modes see how it reacts so I hope you found this video useful any questions please drop them in the comments and thanks for watching